Uh, can I, on my computer, I can like show, show this, but I wanna just see if I can, um, that's the problem here, isn't it? Um, okay, so I can get started in just a minute. And what I need is Oh, well, I'm not sharing my screen here. Okay. All right, Emily. It's one of those things where you're kind of like trying to trying to figure out the best way to do something when you're on three different phones. That's okay. Share screen. Start now. Okay. We're back. All right. So I know everybody except Sandy that's currently present has kind of gone over some of these intro things that I'm going to talk about, but it's a good place to start. I downloaded these photos. Maybe I'll just do that. None of them are in order, of course. Okay. So I made a really cute, um, is it, so you guys, um, I'm talking, but can you have my, um, my shared screen is on your screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So you guys are seeing my phone and hearing my voice, yes. right? All right, lovely. So um, what I kind of wanted to do here in the first session, um, as opposed to next week, is talk from more of a perspective about kind of intro to Instagram, refresh the stuff that we've kind of talked about. And if somebody really hasn't um, ever watched something or, or done some learning other than fussing around inside the app, I want this to be helpful. So um, I wish I had my things in order. Okay, number two. Okay, so um, when we hop onto Instagram, we have an account and that's our profile, right? So um, <clears throat> it's gonna have a bunch of information about who we are and why it's like a splash page of what it is it that you've come to, to get from me, right? Um, in my case, I've got a handful of Instagrams. One is specifically for selling jewelry. The other, um, the other major account is for teaching jewelry, right? So I keep mine organized. Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of businesses that have multiple facets tend to have multiple Instagrams. So um, Indigo Blue and La Maison Blue have two Instagrams going for different sides of their business, right? Yes. Um, so that's that's one reason why you might have multiples. Most sole proprietors, um, if you're the only person in your business and you're not doing a bunch of different things, you're only going to have one account and you got to make sure that people understand what it is that they're here to see you do for them. All right. So in this case, um, my, bit, my username is my business name, right? So that's probably what I have as my LLC or my doing business as. That's gonna be my username if I can achieve that. And if you don't have um, access to that, so like say your business name is already taken on Instagram, you might do something like add uh, Emily Marquis Designs CT. That's really common is like, okay, well, if I don't have my username in, the world, maybe I can have it in my locale, right? So um, a lot of restaurants do that. You'll find that there's a lot of shared names amongst restaurants, at least like nationally. <clears throat> and so um, in that case, they would be like the red stripe CT, whatever, something like that. Um, now in your uh, profile, you have your name. And so that's the section where you're going to put what, what, what are they going to call you? Who, who is it that's running this Instagram? So often, again, if you're an individual business owner and you have control of your account, you're going to want to let them know who they're talking to, not just the business. And not always is the business Emily Marquis. And then the owner is Emily Marquis, right? Um, you guys have creative business names that um, just are separate from you as your identity, but that doesn't stop people from wanting to know who's on the other end of their DMs. Um, again, DMs, 
are direct messages. So that's your inbox on Instagram. Um, then afterwards you have a bio and that's kind of your opportunity to make some really quick commentary on who you are, what do you offer, why are people here? And then um, usually some kind of call to action is your last line that's leading to why are they gonna click your, your link? So your website link, um, if you only have one presence on the internet and that is your website, you're going to put that in there. If you find that you have multiple avenues going on, some people have their website, but then they also sell through um, a marketplace. And then they also sell through um, maybe a business that they, they like that they want to point you towards. All of those things could be in something called a link tree. And what that is, is it's a, it's a third party website that allows you to create a hyperlink that shows you a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different accounts. So we're gonna hop into my Instagram and kind of show you some of that live now. Um, so this is my profile, okay. Um, at the top, you can see I've got a picture of my face. They say lately that having a face associated with your account versus a brand logo is better um, lately for clients who are looking to um, interact with you on social media. If your brand is uh, multi-business owners or it's um, not really about the business owner and it's really about the sales, then that might be the opportunity where you stick with the with the logo of your brand. Um, it's really a case by case basis, but if you're a sole proprietor, if it's just you, people love to see your face. This is probably one of the only times that they get to regularly identify you as a human in the, in the world here. So that's gonna be something that's very useful. Um, again, I have Emily, uh, maker and instructor. So when, you, when you're talking to me in a chat, that's what it says at the top of the chat, Emily, maker and instructor, it says, this is my name, and this is this is kind of how I'm identifying. Um, it's putting a little bit of authority out there, right? Because it's saying I'm a teacher, um, and I also am doing all this stuff myself. Um, then outside of the bold, you have owner instructor and an at symbol with Marquee Jewelry Academy. You can tag businesses and places in your profile to say, okay, this is, you know, this is me, but like I'm, I'm running this business as well. You can hop over there if you're interested. Um, the second line, I'm using a hashtag. So the hashtags, everybody seems to think that, um, you know, if you make a hashtag, then you just, you have it. And that's, you know, everybody will somehow know that it's relevant or special. And that's not always the case, but it can be a particularly useful niche tool um, when we're talking about niche, it's like hyper-focused, very local, very small, um, and, and it's, it's kind of like a club, if you know, you know. So if you're going to use a hashtag in your profile, either have it be something that's very useful for your clients to look at. So this is how you tag your purchases with me. This is how you tag the work that we're working on together. That kind of thing uh, would be very useful. Um, but if your hashtag is like a tagline or somebody's using, it might be wasted character space in your profile until you've kind of bulked it up a little bit. Um, so in my case, a chain of pace is a project I'm working on all year and I'm encouraging my students and my clients to make chains um, all year long. So that's kind of my, I'm hearkening back to that as I talk about it regularly and that's why it's in my profile. But I'm also using that opportunity to say where I'm located, Southeast Connecticut, right? So it's saying, you know, I'm doing this thing. Here is where I'm, I'm at, but it's like four words. Um, and then my call to action, shop small batch jewelry here, pointing to the link tree. So we're going to click link tree just so you guys can see what that looks like uh, when I click my profile. And so this I can constantly change from, um, from the website. It's got like coloring I can change on it. It's got, I could change the font and the bubbles and the profile pictures and all that stuff. And what's nice is I can put a, a link in here like that's temporary. So in this case, the best of, which hopefully you guys are all campaigning to get your businesses involved in the day's best of because free advertisement um, to get your business put out there if you get yourself on that list. 
So this expires in two weeks, the, the second, right? So I've been able to set this to expire in two weeks and it won't show that link anymore. Whereas other links like um, my punch kit or my jewelry school or how to sign up for my email list, those things are constantly there and present um, if they're active and available. Um, so this is a really great way for if, you know, your profile only gives you one link, but you have a lot of stuff to say and get involved in, then you can point people in other directions. So if you had an eBay for your antique stuff, if you had an Etsy for your modern stuff, if you had your website, just to kind of give people a, a vibe for what you, you're doing, you know, it would be very useful for you to point people in different directions so they didn't have to navigate it themselves. Um, they just go, oh, this button says, this is where I get the toolkit. I go to that button, I click it. I'm, I'm a, as a business owner, I'm also getting metrics on that. There's like analytics on the back end of that that shows me how many people clicked this and how many people went to the website afterwards. And um, so you can track that, which is really useful if you're trying to find out how effective your online marketing is. Um, so that's your, that's your profile. You're going to do that in here, edit profile. Um, when you're going to put all this information in here, um, you can also down here, um, public business information. Uh, that's where I tend to put stuff like my email and my phone number. If somebody's trying to get a hold of me, um, I have that under contact information. And if you went to my profile, you'd see a contact button that had my email and my phone number appear if you click on it. Um, so what's nice about that is it's not directly in their face. Like this is my cell phone, but like if they're really trying to get a hold of you, they can dial dial in and find your information. Um, I prefer most people message me via DM, and we get a conversation going there because I can kind of see. I can see the work that they're working on. I can see where they're coming from um, and kind of see what, you know, how I can be most helpful to them personally. Okay. So that was profile address. If you have a brick or mortar, you can also just put in your town. Like you could have Stonington, Connecticut. It doesn't have to be um, that whole, that whole address if you're not comfortable with that. Like for the school profile, I had to actually remove the address because people kept shipping us stuff here. And I was just like, we don't have a shipping address here. Stop shipping stuff. Uh, but they, they were like, well, it was on your Instagram profile. So you got to kind of be picky because if you're advertising you know, your address or that kind of information, people are, aren't going to ask you for it, um, which is helpful because you don't have to answer every call or every message that's like, what, you know, what are we doing here? But um, you also get the opportunity to, um, you, have to you have to dodge, dodge some stuff when it goes wrong because people just make assumptions. Anyways, um, page two. So I made this really beautiful thing, but because I'm trying to um, share it in this other way, it's uh, not in order. So that's good. Let's see. I think this is number two. <laughs> no, I wanted posts. Sorry, guys. I'm going to edit this when it, it comes uh, time to, oh, here we go. Okay. So. The grid and posting. So the grid is that um, that square space underneath your profile that um, most people are seeing when they come to your page. So this is your grid down here. More than likely, this is all people ever see is those first 12 posts. Those are your, four, your 12 most recent posts that you've done on your account that you've kept on your grid. And that's, that's pretty much as far as people post when they're just trying to get a gist. You're not going to get them to go weeks and months into the past. There's some pros and cons there. Um, any content that you leave in the past on your feed is going to stay back there. Um, but what that also means is that you don't have to generate brand new content every single day. If it's been a couple months, if something was particularly popular, you could take a second photo out of that series. You can take the same photo with new content that's more relevant um, and repost it along your feed. It doesn't constantly have to be new, 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 new every single time. And so 
um, when I'm talking about here, how often do I have to post? So I'm going to say five to seven times a week. And I think that that is super overwhelming for somebody who hasn't done this before. So really like if you've never posted regularly, you've only had the account you've posted one time, I'd say, try to go for every couple of days, once a week, just try to get into the habit of making a post, making sure that it's properly edited. There's a good photo to it. You've gone through the process of your hashtags and just do the practice of learning how to post. It doesn't have to be a uh, 110% day one, because that's going to be setting yourself up for failure and nobody wants that. So um, find what's comfortable for you. And then eventually what's going to happen is you're going to find reasons to post on certain days that kind of start to feed itself. You made a new sale. You want to share that sale. You had a really interesting client pop in. You ask if you can share their story, maybe take a photo of them with the new product that they bought. Um, you have somebody popping in and they want to, um, I don't know, they've, they, they're looking for a gift. A, yeah, they're looking for a gift. And now you can talk about how this item that you're carrying is the perfect gift for X coming up, right? Do you have, and you can kind of turn these, these anonymous uh, interactions into teaching moments. And you're using your Instagram to educate your clients on why you are the best um, store owner, the best restaurant, the best, you know, creative. This is kind of your, your opportunity to constantly show people that you're doing the work and that you can help them. So for me, you know, if I have a new engagement client get engaged, I'm going to share the engagement. I'm going to tell the story about how they, how they found me, how they made their decisions, you know, and that could be one post. It could be a bunch of posts. Um, and people are always very interested in that kind of stuff. So using, um, your posts is kind of like a teaching, a teaching and educating about your business is really, um, very useful. So, um, as for your photos and videos, you can post up to 10 images in one post and they call it a carousel. So the term carousel is like that you're swiping, right? So let's pop over to my Instagram. This is a photo with a carousel on it. And you can see in the top corner, it says one out of two photos. And if I swipe, then the second image comes up. All right. So you can have up to 10 swiping images or videos per post. It's a little excessive if you're not really um, teaching something through it or like showing a process. I think 10 is a lot for somebody to take in if it's just 10 vases. That's, that's too much, you know, um, but usually a couple, two, three, four pieces are um, nice. It gives you multiple views of something. It might be able to like have this, which is a very captivating shot, right? It's the product shots, the wet plate photo. Um, and then the next page is a description. It's got a lot of information in there. It's showing the setup. It's showing pricing and dates. So it doesn't have to be the first image um, because if somebody was interested enough by the first image, they're going to get to the second one and go, oh, all the information I was wondering. What's nice about having multiple um, images or videos in a post is that as you're scrolling, um, so somebody might be scrolling through their, uh, what do they call this? It's, um, I'm trying, I'm trying to get to my home because uh, the zoom button is in the same spot as my home button. <laughs> there we go. So if I was scrolling through my Instagram and I pass um, something with a carousel in it, which I might not in the next couple of seconds. Oh, here's one. So I pass this, this turquoise picture and I keep moving on down in the feed, it's going to just show me picture number two, or the next time I log in, it's going to be like, well, you didn't scroll to see the second one. And we thought you might want to. So you're going to be reintroduced to your clients for every single one of those images, every time they log in. So what's nice about that is if somebody was kind of on autopilot and they scrolled past your first photo, when they pick up their phone an hour later, cause they're bored again, they're probably going to see your second photo or your third, depending on how their day is going. 
Uh, so it can be very useful um, to have multiple images. Um, now, when you um, are picking your photos and, and videos, your videos in a post can be up to 60 seconds long. That's a lot of content. Um, 60 seconds is a lot of content for an Instagram post. Um, so usually I like to use those for three-dimensional videos of a product, uh, showing kind of how something's done very quickly, um, a little walkthrough of the space I'm at or um, the studio or outside the studio or driving up to the studio, you know, giving people an opportunity to feel like they're present instead of just like a stagnant, you know, a stagnant photo that's a little hard to relate to sometimes. Um, then you got your description. And I know this is like a lot of content, but, you know, just learning the basics of, of why you're even, you know, in and around Instagram is like really important. And then we'll really dive in next week to the, to the, the, the tips and tricks of it all. Those like, oh, you, I, I, you know, there's this totally cool way to do this thing and it's very helpful. And, but that can be overwhelming if you barely know how to make a post just yet. And that's totally normal if it's not part of your day-to-day -day activity. So what do you write? Um, for me, I've got, I've got kind of an opinion on how I make my posts. So for this one here, um, we just had the, the wet plate here this weekend. So I've got a lot of content about that right now. Even though I'm a jeweler, people like to see stuff about you, right? They want to see content about the business owners. And so here I just have Cal and myself and the first line just says micro business owners. Um, you know, using the term micro is like even smaller than small, right? So you had, you had all these business loans being given out to small businesses. And that's when we all discovered that a small business is 499 or less employees. <laughs> so for <laughs> single business owner, that's a bit of a slap in the face um, because a small business can actually be a huge business. Um, so that term micro is actually the one or two or three people who are running an entire, um, entire business. The second line of my post says, uh, it's a little photo emoji, and then it says uh, VPS Gettysburg. So that's the person who took the image and I'm tagging their accounts so that you can pop over and see them. Now, if you selected more, that's when we start to really get into the caption of the photo. So a lot of people think that if you just put like one tagline, um, people read it, they got their information, they move on. That's all you need to do. But that's really only effective for um, influencers who have tens of thousands of people who don't actually engage in their content. Um, just writing one line is not going to engage your local clients. It's not going to give the information to your, to your closest you know, shoppers that they're really looking for. And Instagram isn't really about having tens of thousands of followers. It's about having a hundred people who talk about you every day. You know, it's about having those clients who really run, like keep your business running having them be informed and happy and um, all the rest of it is just like, it's follower fluff, you know, it's just extra. So in this post here, um, I'm talking about kind of what it's like to be a business. I'm talking about the neighborhood that we're in and, and how excited we are that we're still here, kind of talking about like that full last year's journey. And so I'm just taking an opportunity to paint a little dialogue about how we're feeling excited for the spring, the work that we just did. Um, I'm also taking an opportunity to tag Stonington Borough saying, this is where I am. This is what you should be following if you're interested in where we are. I tagged Dave. So the guy who, who did the photography can share this content. We could talk about how great his experience was there. So I'm giving all of these other accounts opportunities to be present and share and amplify my post and also adding content to their posts. So um, it can be really hard to um, generate content every day. So if you have other business owners that are visiting you or sharing your stuff, you can also share that. And that's very, it's a very symbiotic relationship um, that starts to broaden your follower count. So 
it starts local, right? It starts with the people that you know, it starts with your family members, your friends, the people who shop at your store. And then it starts to expand beyond the borders of your town and your own reach. And at that point, you start having shared clients with the photographer. You have shared clients with the bakery. Um, and what you're getting from that is, is if you have a symbiotic relationship where they're sharing your content and you're sharing theirs, all of a sudden their clients come to you for that thing because they, they trusted the photographer. Why wouldn't they trust the antique dealer that the photographer trusts, right? And it's that old school form of perpetuating, you know, word of mouth, but now it's happening online. Um, and the really awesome thing about that is that you're building this level of trust um, amongst people all over the country and all over the world. So, um, you know, we released a product, like we launched a tool in February and we sold it to like eight or nine different countries plus a crap ton to the U.S., and what was very exciting about that was that it was all done online, right? These aren't all students of mine buying my tools. They're people who trusted other accounts who are excited about getting my tools. And they said, well, you know, that's good enough for them. It's good enough for me. And, you know, international shipping is a huge pain in the ass if you have a chair, <laughs> but if you have a, you know, a smaller product or if you have a digital product, um, having international clients is just, even more, um, more clients that you're, you're introducing to your business and your brand. Um, so that can be really positive in the long run. So at the end of this post, um, I chose to put my hashtags here in my comment section. You can do both. You can put them up here in your commentary, in your comments, or you can put them down here. It's, it's up to you how you want things to be formatted, right? Um, there isn't actually a difference where on the post the hashtags get placed. Um, it's more important that you use them. So let me pull Emily, up. Emily, my... do you want to talk about how to yeah. procure hashtags? Like if you don't know where to start getting your hashtags, what's a good place for them to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, hashtags. Um, so <laughs> there you go. Um, you have 30 hashtags per post. And from what I've collected over the years of watching, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm amplifying information that I've collected from watching lots of different um, influencers and gurus and how to videos. And, um, and then I'm, I'm talking about what works for me as a business and as somebody who in our area is doing this effectively, right? So um, is this an absolute? Not at all. Has it worked well for us? Yes. So you have 30 hashtags. And for me, I like to break those down into three categories, niche, general, and umbrella. So in the case of um, a niche a niche hashtag like Magical Stonington Borough, that's, that's our borough um, business association kind of tag. There's fewer than 100 posts. So what that means is that there are less than 100 photos associated with that hashtag uh, or less than 100 posts. So if somebody wanted information about Stonington Borough, this would be a great hashtag for them to keep tabs on because all of that information is incredibly relevant and local. Now, um, a general hashtag, I'm not gonna have too many of the niche hashtags because somebody's really gonna have to be looking for me to find that information or find me to be associated with that. Um, so like my own personal hashtag, a chain of pace, that's gonna be considered niche. So I'm only going to use it when it's actually relevant to the content that I'm putting on there. Something like Shoreline Connecticut or Shoreline CT, we would call that a general hashtag, all right? So we're talking about the whole shoreline of Connecticut. Um, it's a lot of place, it's a lot of space, but you know, we can all kind of agree that like, we like the water, we like the sun, and we're in Southern Connecticut. So that hashtag has 22,000 posts. And that's really quite useful because it's a lot People definitely use it. They know that it's present. 
Um, but it's not so many that you are going to be drowning amongst other posts. And I'm going to show you on the, on the app what that looks like in a few minutes. Then you have the hashtag beach life, all right? When I go to that hashtag, I see pictures of sunsets, I see waves, I see small town shops. There's 33 million posts. And that's what we're gonna call this big umbrella post. Uh, it's got so much content going on in there that you're definitely gonna drown. Nobody's really gonna notice you in there, but it does tell the algorithm that's your beach content or that you belong with the content that this is being put around. So between your 30 hashtags, the algorithm, which is this magic, this magic AI behind the, behind the app, the algorithm is deciding who should see your content, how often should they see it and uh, whether or not they should see it at all based on what you're saying is relevant information in your post. So your hashtags are you saying, I'm in the borough, I'm on the shoreline. This is about like that beach life, for example. And the algorithm's gonna go, you know, these Rhode Island beach people probably wanna see this content. You know, uh, the um, Long Beach Island people probably wanna see this content because it, it's relevant to the stuff that they're posting. And so now you're, ex, you're exceeding your, your, local, your local organization and you're starting to get feelers out in other places. <clears throat> when we're looking for hashtags for a post, um, you're gonna, um, so I just pressed my little search, uh, my little search button, it's the um, bottom, second to the, to the left, um, the little, um, is that a microscope? Magnifying glass. Magnifying, Magnifying glass. glass, yes. So I'm, and again, guys, I'm in, um, I'm in a pixel. So my app may look a hair different from yours, um, but it's really not, um, it won't be crazy different if you're using an iPhone. So in this case, I've got top accounts, tags and places. So I'm gonna go to tags. And you can see I was looking up some hashtags recently. Um, so if we look, you know, we've got these two uh, spellings of borough. They're both kind of equivalent um, uses of hashtags. We're going to go to this top one. And there's two, two descriptions. There's top and there's recent. So top is these are the best performing posts for this niche um, hashtag. So for example, the Como posted that the new beach passes were available a month ago, and it's still the top post in this hashtag, right? Whereas recent, um, well, okay. So the most recent post was this post from the Como. So it seems like they're using this hashtag the most often, and that's why that's happening. But you can see how something so niche can be really um, hyper-focused on uh, that content, right? So picture. Um, uh, Emily, if you would here. search yeah. the Stonington Borough hash, hashtag. Sure. Hashtag okay. Stonington Borough. Is it, oh, I used to use magical Stonington Borough, but I felt like it was really long and not a lot of people were using it. So yeah, I changed exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. And so, that's another thing to note is like, sometimes you have to change things when they're not mm -hmm. working, right? <laughs> right. So um, top posts, you can see um, you've got indulge here in the center. You've got that beautiful house I don't believe anybody lives in. Uh, <laughs> you've got this happy couple, um, my ring to the left. So this is, you know, your top posts for local Stonington content. And again, this is, um, I would still qualify this as a niche under, under 10,000, I'd call a niche post. Um, but you can see there's lots of really fantastic local content. Now, if we look at something like, um, what was my other one? My next one was, mm, oh, Shoreline, Connecticut. So 23,000 posts. I'm gonna have a hard time finding something specifically Stonington in here, but you can see that there's a lot of content that I think you know most of our clients 
would all find very interesting if they were interested in us and what we're offering. And I say that as like a really big blanket us, right? We're all kind of living and working in a small, very specific town because we all kind of wanted the same thing. We wanted to be by the ocean. We wanted to be in a small town. We wanted Main Street, you know, Main Street, New England, that kind of vibe that um, is the reason why all of our businesses are in a small area. And that's going to be kind of content that's interesting to your clients. So then when you get something like beach life, I mean, you're just drowning in images at that point. Um, it would be very, very difficult for me to find something that's completely accurate. You see, there starts to be a lot more like beach body stuff. Um, but again, if that was the kind of thing that you were working on, you know, who doesn't love a dog? Absolutely adorable. It actually looks a little terrifying, but we won't judge. Um, so when you're trying to figure out your hashtags, um, I'm trying to go for about five of those really smaller niche hashtags. Those are your um, one to 5,000 usage hashtags. Um, then I'm gonna use about 20 general hashtags. And those hashtags I'm hoping are in between like 10,000 and 500,000 uses. Um, and then um, my umbrella, those are gonna be like in the millions. And so whenever you're typing in a hashtag, right? If I, if I wrote um, jewelry, it's gonna show me kind of generally how many posts, how much usage is happening in each of those. So jewelry of the day has 3 million posts. Jewelry lover, 3.4 million posts. So for me, those would be big umbrella tags that I'm probably gonna use sparingly because I feel like I'd get lost in there. Um, but if I did like gold jewelry, that would have less. So next, let's see. Um, okay, some terms we've gone over. Um, hashtag versus tagging. So hashtags are when you have the pound symbol in front of a descriptive term. So somehow identifying what's happening in the photo. Um, so hashtag Zoom call, hashtag computer, hashtag uh, morning cup of coffee, right? Little, little things that could be small phrases or terms or locations that tell you what's happening here. And it's really telling the algorithm because most humans aren't doing this on their own. You're populating um, an AI. Tagging is when you use the symbol and a user account name. So at Emily Marquis Designs, what that's going to do is it's going to put a notification in that other business account that you're tagging them and that maybe that content is information that they're going to want. So if you tag Stonington Borough CT in your post or in your comments, that's going to tell Sandy, hey, you might want to reshare this to the, to the group page um, because it's relevant. So very useful um, kind of differences. If you use a hashtag, there's no notification involved because it's just a general, um, a general thing versus the tag, which is telling a business owner um, or an account owner that this is relevant. Um, it also allows people to follow those accounts. So they'll see, oh, they tagged, you know, Stoning to Borough CT. I wonder what that account is doing. I'm going to click on that and go to it. Um, I don't know what the real term for this is, but I call it phishing and I use it in a positive way. So interacting genuinely with followers um, and their comments uh, in your niche and your locale to encourage them to follow you. So one of the most important ways or effective ways to get people to know your account is there and to help your account grow is by going into other posts in the comments section and interacting. So if you went to um, Noah's and you saw that they had a post um, about like their meatloaf, you could comment, absolutely love, you know, Thursday meatloaf at Noah's and uh, can't wait to be back there next week. Now, if somebody else had written that, you could interact and say, yes, that's my go-to, love, uh, love walking down the street after a hard day's work and getting, getting that. Somehow you're using your 
your commentary less as thanks, nice, awesome, very cool. These like little short responses you could have if you were in agreement. Instead, taking a little bit longer to um, actually give a response to interact in that in that little micro universe that is Noah's post about meatloaf. That's giving you an opportunity to interact with other locals who might like this restaurant, who might have a reason to be in that area to say, oh, I'm interacting with this other business. And when I look at their page, they're also on Water Street or they're also in Stonington. I can hop over there next time I go and get this meatloaf. Now, it's a totally made up circumstance, but that's it. That's what happens. That's how people find you. That's how they follow you is because they see your account being active somewhere else or somehow associated and they go, that's actually right up my alley. I'm going to follow them too. And I'm going to utilize them the next time I'm in town or I need something online from them. Um, so that's just kind of uh, something I do regularly. They say you could, you should do it every day. I don't do it every day. That's exhausting. But you should do it regularly just to kind of encourage new followers that aren't spam or useless to your actual growth of business. Saves. Um, so saves are kind of like an extra like, and we're going to get into that um, a little bit later, but I'm just going to show you how it's done um, because this can be helpful as you're growing your business. Um, so this little button down here, um, so at the bottom of this post of this family, you've got a heart, that's your like, you've got a little uh, talking bubble, that's your comment. You've got the airplane, favorite airplane, that's a send. And then all the way to the right, you have this little, um, this little banner and that is a save. So when you press that and hold, it lets you save this post somewhere. And it's kind of like an extra big like, right? It's like, I really, this is so important that I have to come back to this. Um, you want people to do this for your posts. It's very positive for you, um, but it's also useful as you're getting into Instagram and using it as a resource. So for me, when I see chains that I really love, I put it into the chains. Now, where you're going to find that is um, off your profile. You've got the, um, the triple line icon in the top right and can go to your saved section. And this is a bunch of fo uh, folders of the content that you've saved that you thought was information that you wanted to come back to. So if I was trying to help a client find something, say I was an antiques dealer and I was looking for comparable information on a product, I might you know, start a folder of that product that I'm trying to find and say, oh, well, this sold, it was X price. That sold, it was that price. You know, It's just uh, one of many ways to utilize that basic function. So again, that's these four symbols. Um, you want people to like your posts, but you should also be interacting and liking other people's posts. You want people to leave you comments. That's very important when people are interacting in your, in your comment section. Um, that's a great way for you to get further information out there. Shares, I'm going to show you how um, to do that effectively. That's kind of sharing a post to somebody else's DMs or sharing it to your stories. And then saves, which again are like the super likes, um, very important these days to this AI that's living inside Instagram. Yeah. Okay. So the last thing I really want to touch on, I've got more, but like, I want to give you guys a chance to talk and I don't want to keep everybody past business, um, is I just want to talk about stories for a second. And these are kind of um, also very easy to get into as an intro level. Um, your stories are kind of like 24 hour flyers. So, um, you have them inside your profile They're in the top left corner, which I'll show you in a second. And it gives us an opportunity to do stuff. That's a little less, um, aesthetically pleasing, a little less business forward. Um, and you can have a little bit more fun with it. So, in the case of this first one, um, this shared the post about wet plate photography. 
Um, so you can see it has the at Jewel Marquee Jewelry Academy. So that's saying I shared this from an account um, and then I'm tagging the borough, I'm tagging the historical society and I'm saying, hey guys, this Saturday we're having this event. Um, so this would be how I would use a story as, a, as actually a direct flyer. In the second one, I'm using it to amplify a meme, right? So it's a joke, it's lighthearted, but I'm also giving some advice, right? So anybody in my niche would think that this joke is hilarious. And then um, my little <laughs> comment is save, save stone setting for the morning, right? So that is just me kind of saying like, this is so true and this is why I don't do that. Um, and then this guy is a reshare of, of the photographer who was giving us a little shout out. So you might use your stories to shout out with other businesses and tell people to go follow um, other places. So what that looks like in the app is, let's go home, take me home. Or don't take me home. Give me a second. And there we go, okay. So um, let's just, that's, I don't want to be that far into this. Okay. So my story is um, here on my top left. Um, so you can see I've got a bunch of little tags at the top um, that show how many slides I have, kind of goes through it every few seconds. So it gives people enough time to read something, but you can use it for kind of whatever um, content you want. And the best part about it is it deletes after 24 hours. So this is an opportunity for you to share some information that you don't want to be permanent. You can kind of just talk about stuff that's going on. And you can also see who in your feed, if you're a business owner, who in your feed is watching this stuff. So very useful information to see how effective your content really is when you're out explaining all this information. You can go, oh, you know, people really responded well to this. They clicked these things. So in this case, um, Mrs. Emily Post, I shared my friend's skirt that I was wearing in some content earlier this week and just gave her a shout out that I really loved it. And I put her account in there. So you can see that four people saw that post and immediately went to her account and so that's how, that's how that actually is happening behind the scenes is people can interact with these posts. So you can see that there is a little at symbol with Mrs. Emily there in the second, um, the second section of talking. And then the top left corner, I've got another one. So those are two opportunities for people to click her name and go to her product. And so you want people to do this for you. And then you can also be doing this for other locals um, that you wanna support. So if you went out and had a really great coffee, you wanted to share that you got that coffee somewhere and encourage your clients to go there. That's what they're looking for in this kind of area is that camaraderie and support and community and um, kind of some behind the scenes stuff. They're telling you, you know, you're, you're showing them how your business is like, what you're like. Um, it would be appropriate to put a picture of your dog in your stories, but if it's not part of your brand, it might not be appropriate for you to put it on your, on your content, your grid, you know? So there's kind of different rules for what is and isn't um, useful in that um, in that that space. So I'm going to show you how to share something your stories, and then we'll do a little Q and A, and that'll be that because uh, this is a lot. There's a lot of information. So I've clicked on a photo, and I've got that little paper kite, and when I click it it says add post to your story or send it to somebody. So I just send it to any of these people. I could just press the send button, but I'm gonna click add post to your story. And now I've got a little world where I can add um, links, I can add text, I can tag accounts. So I'm gonna click this little square smiley face and it's giving me opportunities to do things like tag a product, tag a location, um, do a, a mention of an account, a hashtag, um, polls and questions and stuff. So for example, if I wanted to um, tag VPS Gettysburg because they're in this post, it's going to give me a nice little button that somebody knows how to click. 
Um, if I wanted to do a poll and say, you know, do you, you love it? You know, and then I could say, um, yes or yes. Right. Cause we don't want to give them an option to tell them that they don't love us. Um, <laughs> these are little things that people can interact with, um, in your stories, there's ways to personalize them. You can even add, um, gift stickers, which are a whole, a whole world of, of crazy content, but like, let's say I wanted a hydrangea. Um, nope. We're just gonna type flower because I can't spell hydrangea. So add some little hydrangeas in the corner and you know, it's an ugly post, but you get the idea. So there's way customize these little flyers, these little 24 hour pieces of content um, and share those to everyone. Um, and then of course I would press your stories in the bottom left. Um, I could press close friends, which I'll describe in our next, um, in our next class, or I could just directly send this to somebody if I never wanted it to see the light of day because it's horrendous. I'm just going to X out because demos are not for the gram but that kind of gives you an idea of um, what that looks like when you're trying to share a story. And of course we can dive deeper into that another time. And uh, yeah, and then we're here, we're here at uh, questions and thoughts. So um, the gist of Instagram is that you kind of have to play around to learn what you're doing and what works for your business and taking kind of hints from the people following you, what works and what doesn't. So for me, most of what I've learned, I've either learned through Googling questions, watching other people do their businesses or experimenting myself over the last five years. So you don't need to be as adept at this as it seems through this, through this like there's a lot of information. Um, but it's years of practice that turn into sales in the long run. Um, so your goals right now are that most most business uh, most people looking at a business under the age of forty are probably going to be looking at your Instagram account before they look at your website because they want to see are you are you relevant are you active are you are you open I would I'm more likely to check a restaurant's Instagram to see if they're open on a specific day than I am to call them. So um, if you want people to think that your business is active and open and approachable, having regular content um, on your Instagram page is kind of important. So as I said, doesn't take, you don't have to post every day from, from this workshop until infinity, but just trying to start um, getting a good habit down and kind of figuring out what your business should be focusing on on that platform is really important. I know Carolyn and I discussed that while she has many, many facets to her business, she would most enjoy selling antique jewelry in the future. So we discussed, you know, taking her Instagram and focusing that on antique jewelry sales because that's a very popular thing online. It's easy to ship and uh, the photographs beautifully. So that would be more effective use of that Instagram space than per se, you know, a chair. So there's ways to figure out what's most going to work for you and your business. And, um, and that's just kind of through a little bit of thought and experimentation. So any questions? Great presentation, Emily. Thank you. Great job. I tried. <laughs> you so can tell your teacher. For you, Emily. Yeah. Um, we talked about this a little bit and it would probably apply to Carolyn as well um, because she's planning on focusing on her antique jewelry. How do you feel about putting prices on Instagram? Do you leave that? blank do you um how do you navigate that i would say especially with new products so with the antiques it's a little bit different i think but when you have new product where um say someone can look at a shirt that we have on our website and then they can go scope it out 
elsewhere and kind of price shop. So how, how does that work? Do you not have prices on there or what? So I tend to always include my prices for the most part. Um, if something is particularly expensive, I might ask somebody to inquire. But um, if, it's, if it's a general product that I'm trying to move through Instagram, like if I'm trying to sell it on Instagram, there's going to be a price tag associated with it um, because I'm just trying to make the sale. I don't want somebody to send me 30 messages about a product and then I tell them how much it is and then they go, never mind. I would like to avoid that entire selling process by them going, that's not my budget, right? Um, I don't think that a lot of clients actually price check stuff. I think Instagram is a world of impulse buying um, and that more people are just excited to see the thing that they want in front of them than they are to go, okay, now that was a pink quarter length sleeve shirt with this. Nobody's doing that. And if they were doing it, they weren't going to buy through you anyways. You know, they're just using you for inspiration and they're going to shop on Poshmark for the rest of their lives, which is kind of a me thing. That's what I do, you know? Um, you you got to know who your client, your clients aren't, right? Mm -hmm. I have almost 4,000 followers. I've probably got a hundred clients on there that I pay attention to from a day-to-day -day basis that are actually important that I know are going to fall through on the conversations and the sales. And sometimes new people come out of the woodwork and you're like, all right, add you to the, the list of people that are um, here to shop and support and inquire and care about the business that we're here um, doing. So I like to put my prices out there. I think it helps clients know exactly what they're looking at. Um, you know, for example, I would, I would put a $1,500 ring. I would put the price tag on that, but I wouldn't put the price tag on, you know, a $1,200 Opal that for me, like it's a, it's a funny little difference, but, um, I don't want to put a price tag on the Opal because it really depends on how it gets set. What is it in? What does it become? Um, it could be exponentially more expensive, but if I have a ring and it's finished and it's good to go and there's no changing the price Sunday or Monday, then I'm going to just put the price out there. You know, it's not for haggling. It's not for price checking. This is how much it costs. End of story. Um, and that's kind of how you, you find your space. Um, but I think that for the most part, putting your prices there helps encourage shopping online because people, you know, it might be 11 PM. Do you want to respond to that message effectively to make the sale? Or do you want them to just know that they want to make the purchase? Most people do their shopping online between 10 30 and 11 30 at night. Um, that's when I get all my notifications that sales have gone through. I wake up in the morning and my DMs are completely full of, of questions and it's like, that's when people are doing this. They're sitting in bed. They're looking through stuff that they can't walk through because they're in bed and the store is closed and they're deciding if they want to buy something or not. Um, and if they have to wait 12 hours to get a response from you, they may have bought it somewhere else, you know? So I, I'm always inclined to put on pricing, especially if it's not something crazy unique or particularly um, variable, you know? Okay, thank you. Yeah. All righty. Well, that seems to wrap up our section pretty much right on time, under an hour. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, we're going to get into a lot more um, specifics so what I would recommend is, especially if you're finding this useful, practice a little bit of it so that um, when we're talking about more complicated steps in the next session, you have a gist of this information, just the basics of posting, maybe putting something in your stories. Uh, I know we all looked at our profiles together, um, those of you who are present, but those of you who are watching, um, you might want to take a look at your profile page and make sure that it's, um, it's effectively using that small square footage that uh, people see first. So, yeah.
Awesome. Well, thank you, Emily. We really appreciate you taking the time to share your expertise. I think it's really, really valuable. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, teachers teach. So happy to be helpful and uh, get us all going, you know. I think that's important. It's it's hard to find somebody you trust to give you this information because, you know, there's a million gurus on the internet and you're like, well, so-and-so said this and so-and-so said that. And it's like, well, then they just want money at the end. And I just want you guys to all thrive. So that's my goal. Thank you, Emily. Thank you yes, so much. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Okay. Bye. Have a good day, guys. Bye.